as a version. He's got a long way to go, but he's very similar in style and talent and size as Danny Manning. And remember what Danny and his miracle kids did up in Kansas. Well, that is high praise indeed. And Mike Davis, we know he ended up in the job under some controversial conditions because of his predecessor, Bobby Knight, but he's now comfortable. Senior, 75% on the season. Right in front of the home fans, and a chance to knock off the Big Ten team. The crowd comes through, makes the first one. This to put him up by six. Congratulations to Dan Dockett. He's done a great job coaching and preparing his guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anytime. You get fans out on the court. It's been an exciting game. You know, on Friday night, the Bowling Green State fans turned on the goalposts with BGB Toledo tonight. They're running on the field, or on the on the court, I should say. And I bet you they could take down the goalposts. They would <laughs> take down the basket. I'm sure they do that too. Great win for BG. Beat Michigan for the first time in six tries. Once again, Bowling Green is led by four seniors. Two years ago, those seniors were champions. They won the Mid-American Conference title. They know how to play. The freshman came up when it was important, and I really like the way Dan Dockage runs his program. And again, like you said before, this is not an upset. It's a pretty good veteran Bowling Green State basketball team. Falcons end up winning the state. Final score tonight from Anderson Arena is 65 to 59. There's one happy senior right there. Brandon Harden, the Falcons, knock off Michigan. Do it in front of their own fans. Boy, for three, he buries it. And he shot the three this year a lot better than he did last year, especially on a name fight. He's really been big shooting the three this year early in the season. Cable into Lang, just a bad pass. It goes right out of bounds. See, what they're missing right now in North Carolina is anybody who is really comfortable at the point guard slot to ignite the offense. You have to have point guard play in college basketball to be successful. Boy, again for three, and again buries it. He'll get a lot of PT, baby. Oh, man. He'll get a lot of playing time. He starts knocking those down. They change the lineup. They put Coverdale on the bench. People trying to answer back. Nothing to do on Daniel. Pumps it in. Capel drops it down. Morrison gets transferred out of his block. Gets it back. And finally, Indiana comes out of the traffic. Fight. Entry pass, and Scott gets back nicely on defense. Indiana now going to reverse the basketball as A.J. Boy with the jumper from out of Atlanta, Georgia. Speaking about Georgia, Tech. How about that, eh? 20 points down to come back and win it. Beat the Badgers in the ACC. Starting to dominate this challenge. Five drives, gets it up on the glass, drops it down. Almost went to North Carolina. Also, Duke is right in the hunt along with Indiana. That is we all talked about. Coach that in Michigan. Indiana with a good start early in this game. Lang, double team, trying to take away that drive by Lang. Good move without the basketball right there. Jackie Emanuel very quick. Mike Davis played at Alabama. Played for Rick for three years at CM Newton, one of my favorite guys. Played for him for one year. It was Mr. Hustle when he played down there. I'll never forget. And I can bring up Wimp Sanderson. I got to tell the story. You and I were doing it. Actually, it was North Carolina at Alabama many years ago. Wow. Wimp had you and I over to his house. His lovely wife made us some desserts. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And you picked up Bear Bryant's hat.
That's right. You grabbed Bear Bryant's hat. You picked it up and put it on. I was wearing the Bears hat. That's right. You got a good memory, John. Wow. Lang drops that one, and I thought Wim Sanders was going to have a heart attack. North Carolina sitting in a 2-3 zone right now. And they had him shooting the three really well, getting into the gaps. Matt Doherty trying to change defenses. Jeffries drives, aims just to the glass. Nothing there. Manuel comes up with a loose ball rebound. He's got good athletic ability. He's a slasher. Scott for three. Off the mark. Capel crashing the glass and gets fouled. Shooting the three has been the problem for North Carolina early. There's two problems got compounded and presented a dilemma for Matt Doherty. Point guard play and shooting the perimeter shot. 22%. Shooting threes this year, as you're going to watch here. Another brick as it comes off. There's the foul on Cable. Now, this kid here is being asked, is Matt Darty, you talk about enthusiasm and spirit. I'll tell you one thing, there'll be no quitting that guy on the sideline. Jason Cable has been asked to change his role, John, and I don't know if he's that kind of player. For example, he's a great role player and a great support player with super people around him. But now, instead of being the support player to the Joseph Cortez and the Brendan Haywoods, he's asked now to be a star. And what North Carolina's lacking, they don't have that dominating star player that we've seen over the years. Well, the question becomes, Moy launches a three. Does it just take some time to understand that now, yes, I do have to be the go-to guy? Well, what's going to have to happen right now, everybody else and all the guys are going to have to chip in and do all the intangibles that it takes to win. Get on the floor for loose balls, block out, cut without the basketball. Second foul on Jeffries. That'll send to the bench. So you can make up for the lack of a star if guys understand their roles and do all the little things that we talk about in the world of basketball. Ryan gets it, turns, so oh, nice hook. That's where he's effective, John. That's been his style of play through his career, down in the low box, utilize the jump hook in the lane. Six points for Lang, six of Carolina, seven. Already playing that 2 3 zone. I think more guys got to utilize that. I talking to Dave Gavin on the phone the other day. We said that's why Syracuse has been so successful. People, people don't have really the ability consistently to shoot that three point shot. You play the 2 3, you shatter the great shooters, and you usually can be effective. When we come back, we'll hear about Matt Doherty and how he's dealing with this 0 2 start. died in the World Trade Center attacks. I mean, uh, this is this is a game of basketball. You know, this isn't a game of life. And so I think I can put it in perspective. Oh, well said. And definitely to the point. Just the same for folks in this building and in this area. To a lot of them, this is something just about as close to life or death as you can get. But he'll he'll get it going. Oh, there's no question. He's got it going for the future. He's got some outstanding kids coming in next year, John. In fact, three of the top 15 in America have committed to North Carolina. Carolina again turning up the defense there. Newton's turnaround comes a well short. Scott with the push. Coverdale kicks it up into the seventh row. Let's check him with Bill Peter. All right, John. Michigan already has lost to Mac member Western Michigan. Here against Mac member Bowling Green. It's Keith McLeod. They're up by two, and now Bowling Green is up by five, and Michigan goes down. 65 59. Bowling Green wins it by six. That's a former Hoosier, Dan Dockage, with that big win. Hey, but you know what? He says they lost to Western Michigan. You saw what Ball State did in Maui. I'll tell you, the Big Mac Ten is good. The Big Ten has been struggling lately. Penn, Penn State lost to Yale. Northwestern lost to East Carolina. Lang is four for four from the field with eight points. He told me he really felt good. He lost to Butler the other day. Indiana lost to Marquette. What is happening? The Big Ten had four teams in the top 20 this year, this week rather. Along with the ACC, the most of any conferences. That 2 3 has been bothering Indiana. As he turns around, three pointer, no good. Lang with the big rebound. Lang is really ready to play. He really wants the ball. He told me before the game, I feel great. Manuel, Scott, drives into a lot of traffic and gets blocked by Newton. Decision-making so important. 
Scott does a nice job to get back on defense, though, and tip the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he's a good athlete. He's a combination guard. Mike Davis is happy to have Newton on the floor. He's got a cracked bone in his cheekbone area, and there was some talk that he was going to be out for a while. They thought it was going to need probably two to three weeks with a possible fracture, but it's a cracked bone, and it's all right. It's good play. There's that 2 3 zone, John. Got to get on those jabs. Got to attack. A little dribble penetration. Odell with it. Fife now looking at Coverdale. Odell flashes through the lane. They're going to get some shots from Coverdale in Fife. Coverdale had a big game last year against Notre Dame. 30. Oh, great save by Hornsman then. I'll tell you, Lang is all fired up. He is really fired up. He's trying to do his part to get his team to the winner's circle. Four-year starter, along with Capel. As a matter of fact, the seventh and eighth players in Carolina history to be four-year starters. Hit the rotation over now. Here comes Lang. Get a good angle on the block. I mean, these are two proud programs, North Carolina, Indiana. Look at those years with the general down here on one sideline and Michelangelo on the other side, Dean Smith. Two years the best nickname. Matt Doherty with a nice little affectionate tap to Lang's head, appreciative of his effort. That part of a national championship here in 82, and he played with certainly the greatest ever to lace him up. Michael the Magnificent, Mr. Jordan, and Sam Perkins, and James Worthy. First sticker who just came in the game trying to set a high screen. Scott doesn't get it, and we get a carry of the basketball by Scott. First sticker's been faced with a lot of injuries. They need him to give him some inside play. He can go inside, outside. Two years ago, got some quality time. Last year, did not. They're going to make Indiana beat him with that 2-3 zone. Fight from deep. Whoa! <laughs> Wedges that one in. He had 17 points in 17 minutes against Texas. Still four Indiana three. ball. Yeah, four for five from the three-point line. So look at five, Mr. Basketball in Michigan. Open in possession, there it goes to the Hoosiers. That's one they might want to change in the ultimate possession. Yeah, right there. I mean, that's an example. You benefit from that situation. His dad coached at Michigan under Johnny Orr. Now coaching over Clarkston. Athletic director as well as brother Dugan starting to do some TV and radio work. That's my job. Hey, Dugan, come on. Stay in the financial world. He's got better hair than you, too. Indiana trying to be patient with his son. You got to make some passes to the interior. You got to get some touches inside. Newton goes strong to the glass and gets fouled. Looks like Cape. A big year out of Newton. They lost Kirk Hasty and went to the NBA draft. First round, a late choice for the Charlotte Hornets, who gave him good inside play. And to be really effective, you need balance. You need inside, outside. As you look at Jeffrey sitting on a pine, those two quick fouls. Speaking about recruits, Mike Davis excited about two kids he has coming in next year. A kid named Strickland from out of the Maryland area, and he's got a kid, Tracy Wright, coming in from out of Texas. Everybody's high on Melvin Scott to Capel. He's going to foul away from the ball. First sticker is down there with Hornby. Indiana doing a lot of traveling, John. Mike Davis was telling us, you know, six games, I don't even get home. Got two games home before we enter the Big Ten conference schedule and two at home in that Cup Ten City. He's got Notre Dame, hasn't lost yet. Mike Gray doing a fantastic job where Matt Darty really initiated and created some energy there two years ago. And then he's got a game with Paul State. That's not going to be easy at home. Just ask Tommy Amaker about the Mid-American Conference. Who's in the West of Michigan? Your alma mater. That's right. And the Bowling Green, Dan Dockage. Two of the great hockey schools. Mangler with the drive and foul. He's on the floor. Take a look at Indiana's next few years. I'll tell you, Southern Illinois. They played Illinois really tough. Bruce Weber doing a heck of a job. And they got the Fighting Irish next Tuesday on ESPN. And Ball State with Patrick Jackson. Remember that name. I'm standing guard. Manuel gets it up, but there's a lot of challenges coming up. Adam has released the ball, and it winds up going out of bounds. Matthew Manuel was a McDonald's High School All-American. I know Billy Donovan was really chasing him big time from out of Florida. And Matt Barty came in, who's an outstanding recruiter, and won that battle. 
Coverdale now. They have to find a way to get it seams. They're allowing right now North Carolina to match up with them out of the zone. See, they're not really attacking seams. They're stationary. Wow. Hornsby nails a three-pointer. Well, that's one way to beat the zone, shoot over the top of it. But if you're going to be effective in a long-term shot, you got to be able to attack the zone. Hornsby shot 43% from three-point range a year ago. Yeah, he struggled a little bit this year. He was a big-time scorer in high school in Louisiana. A nice, nice dump play. down the lane. Nice pass. Will Johnson with the pass. Yeah, he's a Moorhead scholar. Walk on, academic scholarship. Did a good job, good role player. He turns around, not even close to that. That shot. Scott wants to take a right in fight, round him off the glass. Oh, that could have been I a goal there. Yeah, I got a little interference up there. I got a little interference they missed up there. Yeah, I think definitely that one should have counted. That's already had a nice phone call for Roy Williams, giving him a little boost. His former boss in Kansas said, heck, my first year, I lost eight games in a row. And they were coming off a national championship as well. Well, didn't go down. Heels right now trail by six. It's 17 to 11, 11 41 to go here in the first half. John Saunders alongside Dick Vitale. 1981, they had a big matchup, these two schools. Oh, yeah. National championship. Little Isaiah Thomas and company walked away with the NCAA title, one of three for the General Robert Montgomery Knight. Jay Billis, Dan Schubert, and yours truly will see the General this Saturday out of Texas Tech. Lubbock against TCU. Cable spin, ran out of real estate and walked. Spacing really so important also to an offensive half-court set. Now here's what you're talking about at TCU. Billy Tubbs, his final year at TCU. And Texas Tech for Bob Knight. If you haven't a chance to watch the highlights in Sports Center, get a full game win. Odell with a nice move. Yeah, Odell's been really solid for them on the inside. He's given them good production off the bench. That's what Davis wants out of him. Some scoring off the bench, some rebounding. Got right in the gap of that zone. Heels continue to struggle from the outside. That's been a nightmare. It's been a real headache. Odell from deep. Not this time. Capable grabs the rebound. Odell trying to make life hasty. Then we go inside, outside. Capable, a good passer. Very versatile player. Oh, they finally get it to drop Will Johnson. Good basketball IQ. A young kid just has hustled his way into the starting lineup. Odell again in the paint. Goes against Lang, and Lang gets another block. Both these clubs could have been so much better if a couple of guys would have stayed in school as you like. Look at Johnson shooting that baseline jumper. Hastings went early. And Joseph Forte talked about him today on that show with Sean McDonough and Mr. Ryan. And they said they're trying to make him a point guard. It's like a combination guard. It's going to take him a while to adjust the play at that next level. That is going to take time for him. He's got to work on his ball handling skills. Moy right in line and right over top of him. J. Moy really picking up from his performance against Texas. They have a traveling team. I tell you, Mike Davis, he just got his team playing all over. So I need some home dates, baby. Johnson on the floor, drives the lane, drops it down the lane. Doesn't finish because he's fouled by Newton. I tell you, he's really earning some PT for North Carolina. This Johnson. Will Johnson is really playing well. He's creating opportunities, Mr. Saunders, for his teammates inside, a little penetration. I'm gonna watch Will Johnson right now, right to the gap and see. Oh, there it is, the little double. Lang playing inspired, Nick. Well, he was all fired up before the game. He flat out looked me in the eyes and I feel great. You know, when you're a close player, you need guards to get you the ball, John. We saw that last night. Duke did a fantastic job, Carlos Bruiser, denying the ball inside to Reggie Evans. But the bottom line was, as you look at Lang's numbers versus the rest of the club, five for five tonight at the field goals, they couldn't get him the ball at the right time. But I still believe those Iowa kids are going to be really good eventually. Pierce and Presley, they played without the U.S. Henderson. I know Mike Krzyzewski had great respect for that Iowa team. Boy, with it, Morrison comes right over on him. Moy again on the floor. See, they're playing passive on the perimeter rather than dribble and attack it. So, Newton does just that, gets it up on the iron and drops it in. 
Hey, John, sometimes I amaze myself sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you think you really know this game, right? Oh, gee, I don't know. I've been bluffing for 23 years, having a lot of fun bluffing, too, baby. Pat Doherty, what's the first thing he said to me when I walked in his office? He says, yeah, I know, you're still undefeated. <laughs> Well, what's the first thing you said to him? Where's my magazine? Yeah, right. He's had all the magazines on his table. He didn't have the ESPN Thick Light Town Basketball Preview. I know what's going to be there next time. I'm setting the floor. Boy with it. He plays off his own. Foul line here. Foul line here. He's open, John. So he slides into the foul line area. Here at the Dean Smith Center, the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. John Saunders and Dick Vitale, Indiana. In North Carolina, the Tar Heels can wrap up the series for the ACC with a win here. Coverdale to his right. The boy looks to drive. Again, Sky. Great pipe extension on his shot. He doesn't get it to drop. Here's a kid that's faced a lot of heat out of Boone. He's a youngster, doesn't have great speed. He's just a solid player, understanding how to play, but hasn't got the ability to beat people off the dribble. I think sometimes people expect so much from young guys, and they only can do what they can do. Player of the year in Minnesota coming out of high school. They are kids. People forget that sometimes. You talk about this place here, it's almost like a little game football. You get spoiled with all that great tradition. Five, Five seconds ball. So much success here. Hey, it was great to see Bill Bradley, which you and I saw him in New York. NIT honored him with a special award for his contributions to basketball. Two out of three years to the final four. Yeah, not, bad. not bad at all. Not to mention the 30 years contribution as an assistant coach. One of my favorites of all time, Michelangelo. You talk about creative and innovative. He's been Newton, that was a tough shot, really flat on the release. Boom, wow. That was a tough catch for Williams. He finally did go up and get it. Bounced right off his noggin and now that. They expect him to have the best upside. Came out of Ohio, missed for basketball. Great leaper, just having a tough time acclimating and adjusting to college play. We saw that with Kelvin Corbin as well. Outstanding talent for Michigan State. Some kids take a little bit longer to learn how to blend into a lineup. Learning how to be a third and fourth option, John, because they've been number one all their life. All of a sudden, everybody you're playing with and against is as good as you. You gotta learn how to share the basketball. You gotta learn how to do other things. Move without the ball, set screens. Coverdale drives on the baseline. Back outside of Perry. And we get a travel down there as George Leach took a few steps trying to spin in the paint. Leach has been giving him a lot of positive minutes, especially blocking shots. At five in his last game, he gives him a special dimension on the inside. He's a shot blocker. An excellent timing. He's from out of Charlotte, North Carolina, so he's back in his home state. And he will look at dump it in for Lang. It comes right back outside. Williams dumps it into Lang again. They should double up on Lang and take away that jump hook. That's a tough jump hook from there. And he was getting that early in the game because of where it was, but that was well away from the bucket. Coverdale. Perry launches a three, short. Scott chases it down. Melvin Scott plays hard. He plays with a lot of enthusiasm. He's a combination guard. Oh, oh, look at that guard. He's excited. That's a big one there. Yes, sir. They finally knocked down a three, and it may be a four. It may be a four, Milpito. Jack McMahon. Oh, look at the emotion of that guard. I remember when I was here, they beat Wake Forest when he went 12-0. He started to cry. He felt he's got a passion. He loves what he's doing. How could you not like a guy that has a passion for what he's doing? Manuel almost ended up in the lap of the Indiana players. Now a chance for, as you said, a four-point play. I know he broke the heart of Billy Donovan when he said no to the Florida Gators. Well, he may have broken the heart of Indiana right there. How do you know when you've heard it? We asked Mike Davis, I know you said, Hey, coach, you going to play some zone? He said, no zone. <laughs> so not man to man, as you see, A.J. Boy. There's the jumper. I said, well, you learned something from the gentleman, huh? You're using that man to man defense? And he looked and smiled. Lang goes to the line. Yeah, posted inside, beating him up inside. Lang said, they're trying to hurt me in here. Pulls it off the front iron. Are you good? 
How quickly things turned for North Carolina last year. They had won 18 in a row. They were number one in America. Everybody was going bananas. Guys were playing great. Joseph Forte, Brendan Hayward. And then, oh, there was an eight-day period where they were blown out twice by Duke. And things began to sink. Finished on a real downside. And this year, the start has been really tough. I think Fife was trying to pass that to you. Yeah, I tell you. As you look at Forte and Hayward, who they lost. Hayward now with Washington with the Wizards. Boy, I felt for Michael Jordan in an interview at Sports Center. He's really getting a little frustrated with all that losing. Plays 76 was in Iverson. Ooh, tonight, that's another L. Yep. Cable. Jump shot. Scott and gets it. Jason Cable's got ability. We've talked about that. He and Lang got to be the leaders in this team. We thought, okay. John, we thought that Indiana was going to be in for a fight. If Carolina had any pride whatsoever, they're going to come out here and they're going to battle tonight. And that's what they're doing. They're out battling. They've been embarrassed. They've been humiliated. Coverdale with an NBA range three pointer that's good. That's a downtown change. He shot that from Charlotte. Shot that from Jay Phyllis' living room. Lang drops it down 16 points for Lang now. He's playing big inside. We talked about how you gotta go to the interior. We got a good one here tonight. Great traditions and a great atmosphere as well. Coverdale, another three that's good. He feels it right now, former Mr. Basketball. And that big night against the fighting guy in Shimoda Day. Played solid for them last year. This year, early in the season, Mike Davis wasn't happy with his effort and said, hey, I'm going to play very ahead of him. He doesn't come out and play hard. Ah. Scott, nowhere to go, and Leach just says, get it out of here. Got 17 block shots already, Leach. Can watch the reverse list. Coming down, right hand can flat out shoot it. And square with that rim, squares the body. All those kids from the state of Indiana for years, you go look at those pavements, they shoot that jump shot. There's Leach. Locking it with the left hand. All your shot block is really the great ones lefty. Rod David Robinson, Bill Russell, the greatest of all time. An offensive foul. Cape pushed off as he made the spin move. That's his second foul. His dad is the coach of Old Dominion. Now sitting on a sideline. Tough situation. I mean, they got a good coach out of Blaine Taylor. As you look at the dad, he's coaching here in the stands. Other son, Jeff now, assistant coach at DCU. Duke Not bad having two sides. One played at Duke, one played at North Carolina. They're bumped down in the post. First sticker, it looks like. That reminds me of Dan Warren's first football at Notre Dame. Had a brother that was captain at Michigan. Had another brother that played at Nebraska. And his dad played in the NFL for years. Can you imagine having a son play for Michigan, Notre Dame, and Nebraska? Wow. Pretty good lines. A lot of stories in that family. Their holidays. See, Jack and Daniel, he's in some nice size up there in the front of that 2 3. He's got those long arms, very active. That's the deflection right there. Just like the way he does for Syracuse in that 2 3. They play the passing blades really well, Jimmy Bayheim's club. Johnson on the floor, pulls it back out now. Comes up with, still has the pivot foot. Knocked out of bounds. And we got a timeout on the floor. Indiana trying to make an 0-3 start, Carolina. That's why those teams are so good. Scott lost the handle on the pass into Lang, backs it back out. Johnson swings it. Manuel. Cable now. Shot clock is at four. See, Cable's got to attack Jeffrey. Jeffrey's got two fouls. Lang again, that sky hook a little bit far away from the hoop. Here at the Dean Smith Center, John Saunders and Dick Vitale as Indiana faces North Carolina. See, Jason Cable was in a triple threat position right there against Jared Jeffries. That two fouls should have really attacked him. Trying to get the third on the big guy. Jeffries did not like that entry from Fife. It's knocked away. Yeah, he stepped to the ball, though. You got to want the ball and step to it. Lang, they close on him and are earning his turnover. Fight on the floor, swings it back out to Coverdale. 
Jeffries now. That's a three-pointer. Rolls in and out. Newton has to go off him and out of bounds. I would like to see Jared Jeffries go inside a little more and utilize his size. Don't forget Donovan McNabb and the Eagles visiting former Philadelphia coach Dick Vermeil and the Kansas City Chiefs tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern time. The Chiefs look to get Kansas City's offense on track. It's Thursday night NFL special, 8.30 Eastern. Mike Patrick, Paul McGuire, Joe Theismann coverage begins with NFL tonight at 7.30. Melvin Scott with that little jump shot while you make some note. Mike Patrick does a great job. And the ball off to Theismann and to McGuire. What a great feel they are. Our buddy Jay Rothman out there as the producer, Chip Dean, they do a fantastic job with that football NFL. Robert Scott playing well. Coverdale launches another three-pointer. That zone just watched him. I don't think they're expecting in any sight that he was going to shoot that, but I don't know why. What they have to do, John, is really identify the shooters. And in the 2-3, you've got to be able to know who the shooters are and get up in their face and not give them good looks. Coverdale now with nine points. How about that one rolling around and dropping down? Blank stepping up. He said, I'm going to be a star tonight. You know, everybody talks about the last time they lost their first two games. They lost them. It was in 1982, and then 83 with Michael Jordan and company, but the bottom line is they lost to St. John's of Missouri, and both were on a road, and both those clubs were highly rated. Boy, a three, and it might be time to get out of that zone. Yeah, you got to, unless you're going to get a little aggressive in it, you come out and shade the shooters. Right now, that zone's very passive, and they're shooting right over the top of it. Indiana really this year has improved on the free throw line. They were last in the Big Ten last year. They're doing a better job shooting the three this year. Capel drives to the baseline. Jump shot short. Coverdale with the rebound. They've had a great effort in terms of playing hard for North Carolina. They just have not been able to come up with the big stops. They're also trading threes for twos. Yeah, that's not going to help either. Don't forget Sports Center in game is coming up next with Bill Pito and Dater Phelps. Take a look at the Michigan State Virginia game, which was postponed. Played in Richmond, and they had some problems with some ice and water on the floor. Bowling Green against Michigan at Michigan, and the Mac did it again. And Bob Knight and Lou Henson. I know it's not Illinois and Indiana. I know that's quite a matchup. <laughs> New Mexico State and Texas Tech. That game's at New Mexico State. That'll be a tough one for Texas Tech down there. As you look right here, the field goal percentage. Look at the shooting the threes. That's the big difference. You get nine for 17 versus two. I mean, right here. There's the difference. Two for six versus nine, man. That's a major difference. Seven plus threes. You don't have to be academically a genius and go to Harvard to figure that's 21 points better for the three. I was trying to figure out my times table. Seven times three. <laughs> I was wondering why you were postponing. Taking so long to do the addition. <laughs> See, right now, the next minute is really important to North Carolina. They got to come on a stop. You don't want to go down double digits after the effort. They went to a half court trap. That is Carolina basketball. Good move by Mike Davis taking Jeffries out. You don't want to get that third. Newton's going to have to make himself available against the trap. You know, fight just the basketball out of Michigan. Comes close to Indiana. Michigan State's been cleaning up against the basketball. Jason Richardson, Marcus Taylor, Kelvin Torbett, and next year, Paul Davis. Coverdale thought about another three. Shot clock is at six. Patience right here. You gotta be patient. Coverdale can't get that to go and winds up turning it over. It'll be a four-point swing. Instead of being up ten, you can cut this down to six. See, I think you got to really think intelligently here right now and go for the high percentage shot. Maybe Cable down inside. Scott, well, that's going to be tough. Dumps it in. Cable a couple times has swatted away. He's the guy I would have went to. Cable on the inside. Now Indiana can hold it for the final shot of the first half. Right, you want to go in at least eight, maybe 10 or 11 the way they're shooting three. Everybody's going to come up, match up on him. Oh, silly foul wow. right there. 30 feet away from the goal, seven ticks on the clock. That's a that's a freshman mistake. Well, well one good thing is he had it to give. Yep. Yeah, he had it to give, so it's not a mistake. That's a mistake on us. We thought they were the ball. Ah. 
me. I'll take the blame. But see, I thought we were a team. I was going to be as a team. <laughs> hey, see how disloyal he was? I'm going to call my boss up, Brian Sheriff. You were disloyal. You immediately turned it to me to turn over. <laughs> so here comes the foul. I thought they were the bonus, but I looked at the wrong team there. So now they got seven seconds. I say I'm sorry to Melvin. <laughs> you man enough to say it. I'm with him. Believe me, that was my first mistake, and it will be my last. Boy, having some trouble getting it in. Finally does to Coverdale. Final four seconds. Coverdale takes it right down the lane. Big roll. And get gets fouled. Foul. Yes. Get a foul in that situation. 1.6 on the clock. That. Miss Cover Williams. Miss Coverdale now attacking the basket. Attacking the goal. I don't know about that call. I think incidental contact right there. You swallow that whistle and let him go to the locker room right there. This is give me two right now. Chance to make it a double digit game when this is over. And rather, when the half is over, Doherty's going to make some changes here. And we had it going through a real blowing up stage here, playing all these games on the road. Davis. It's so it wasn't crazy what happened to come here. I know, it's almost there before. No one else really shot me before. And I didn't know this, John. He said to one of us, he said, I have not signed my contract. I'm not happy with some of the things that are placed in the contract as a four year offer, but he really uh, is concerned about some of the issues in the contract. And that really amazed me. I was really surprised. I would think with some of the things he did the last couple of years. Oh, Coverdale's going to get a chance. Off the mark. So, North Carolina and the Tar Heels, now 20 minutes away from going 0-3, down by 10. Here's Bill Nito and Digger Phelps. Not a dip by talent. If you could get a message to the Carolina fans right now, it might be go man-to-man. -man. Well, you know, one way to attack the zone is to shoot over the top of it. Another way is to beat it in transition. And number three, attack to the inside. They have been doing a great job shooting the over-the-top. Take a look at the alignment. There's your zone defense. Everybody playing an area of the floor. Now what Indiana is going to try to do is get the ball into the versatile Jeffries. Now he's going to penetrate. He's going to penetrate right here, right in this area. Freeze it. See how he draws people here? Now Coverdale steps right to the open area, and now he's going to drive down. There it is. He lets it fly. Nothing but Nylon shooting over the top of the zone. He and Mr. Moy have been on fire from the three. Combined seven of nine from three-point range, and that's seven of the nine three-pointers that Indiana knocked down in the first half. They have nine threes, only four deuces in terms of their shot selection. But they got to maintain some emotion. The one thing is, North Carolina played with a lot of emotion in that first half. Well, you should. I mean, that's the first rule of competition. And that is the problem again. Turnover City making decisions. 36 turnovers in the first two games. Moy, again, who's been on fire, finally misses, and he missed everything. He couldn't believe he was that open. Dump down for Capel, takes it up, gets it on the iron, and drops it through. He's got to start to really assert himself, Johnny. He's one for five in the first half. We don't expect him to be a superstar, but as an experienced player, he's got to contribute a lot more, especially with all these young kids. He's too valuable and too talented. And that was Dad would tell him the same. Moy swings it to Coverdale. It's obvious that Matt Doherty really, right now, feels these kids aren't ready to play man-to-man -man defense as he's sitting in that 2-3. Yeah, well, unfortunately, George Leach and the rest of Indiana is finding the seams in there and shooting from the outside. Well, that's one of the ways to break the zone. Get into the gap, get into the interior, let your big people handle the ball. That's one of three ways to beat it. Johnson bounce pass down for Lang. Books no good. Leach with the rebound. Good minutes out of Leach. He's a kid that didn't get much playing time last year. I know when he arrived at Indiana, Bob Knight was high on his ability to play potentially on a defensive end. Coverdale finally been bailed out by Jeffries. Mike Davis is someone of my staff now. With John Trulor and Jim Thomas, one yep. of your favorite guys. And Jim Thomas, one of the all-time nice guys. Played on AD1's national championship team that beat North Carolina. Leach goes right in Lang, bounces around, won't drop down, and then, wow, boy hit the deck hard. Looks like he's okay. Leach doing a good job making himself available inside. If they get any offense in, that's going to be a plus. Mike Davis, a little smile on his face. 
There's Leach on the inside with the left-handed hook. He's a left-handed player. Ball is against Johnson. Johnson gives you everything he has. It's all a coach can ask. Get the play to his potential and play hard. Leach on the floor loses it. Pike comes up with it and then he traveled. Tried to get a dribble going from his knees, but lost it. This year is 12 for 17, shooting threes coming into this game. Only made 19 all of last year. Pike played on some good Alabama teams down there. Crimson Tide. Coach to the CBA, said, heck, I played nothing but defense. Just checking the passing lane, Jeffries. Oh, it drops it down. And you know what? When we talked to Coach Jordy before the game, he said, that's Manning something they've been having a problem with. Did he look like Danny Manning right there? Yep. 6'10", stepping into the lane, going to coast to coast. Manuel not in there. Capel had it. Comes back to Manuel, drops it out to Lang. But the telegraphing of passes is one thing he was talking about. Yeah, he was demonstrating that. He said, I have to teach the basics of how to make the entry from one wing, from the point to the wing. Comes into line. That jump hook again has not been as hot as it was early in the game. Coverdale had the rebound. He had fouled as he comes down. You're going to watch Jeffries playing right in the passing lane. He's got those long arms. Steps right in the lane and knows how to finish. Nobody finishes in transition like the guy we saw last night, though. Jason Williams. Is he explosive? That's the exact word that you used to describe because it's amazing how quick that first step is. Fife into a double team, finds Coverdale, Jeffries, travel. Harry Rose with the ball, lifted his pivot foot, lifted the pivot foot. Davis doesn't agree with that call, he does my partner, John Saunders. <laughs> you shook your head here? <laughs> I'm not sure you even lift either foot. I can tell you this <laughs> Jeffries playing against Capel. So Jason's got to take that challenge now. Does, shoots over, a little long. Lang tried to tap it back. Johnson had it. Indiana foul. I tell you, look at the makeup of talent on the floor now for North Carolina. And it's certainly not reminiscent of what we've seen in the past that led to those 37 years in a row, number one, two, and three in the ACC. Matt Darty's going to have to do a lot of preaching and pleading this year with this club to get them in a winner's circle because they are limited. Manuel swings it back out to Cape. Shot's no good. Boy with the rebound. Coverdale now. Get so spoiled here when you look at that Carolina uniform and what we've learned to expect here in that uniform. Hey, just walking through the office and seeing the pictures of the guys who've played here. Like our buddy Brad Doherty, one of our own. Absolutely. And obviously Jordan and Perkins and Worthy. Leach gets it on the iron and drops it down. Leach showing he can use either hand inside. They're starting to let the big guy get some touches inside. That'll help his confidence. He could be a big plus for them, especially with Hastings going to the NBA. Indiana's lead is up to 14 now. Ah. Scott fading away from the baseline. Melvin Scott really plays hard. He's a combination guard, trying to give him some point guard play. He'll be a good player here. There's no question he's going to be a good player. Got at 15 points in the loss to Davidson. Leach. Wow. Somebody better tell <laughs> Leach, where's this guy coming from offensively? We heard he's a defensive player, can block some shots. He's showing that he can play in the offense in that nice 15-foot jump shot. He's got some family and friends watching. He's from North Carolina, from out of Charlotte. They worked on the farm all summer to get a little stronger. Manuel misses everything. I mean, that's Air Ball City right there. Lang, using the glass nicely, drops it down. Now, if he can only get a little help from the buddy, Mr. Capel, get back to this game. Crowd has been alive. You can't blame the crowd. They came here pumped up, trying to give them lots of support. The coach certainly was ready, Matt Gordy. If these kids would play half as hard as he works, and how he puts his heart in Fight. Knocks it down. He had not taken many shots in the game. Only one in the first half. We got some guys that can knock that three down, John. We got five cover the L and boy. Blank. Again, that hook isn't there. Manuel gets it swatted, comes right to Lang. Jump shot is short. We get a push off the basketball. And Leach really bothered the shooter right there. Just going after him. Making him change his shot. 
Timeout on the floor. The young Tar Heels facing adversity again, down 14. Either a timing or a foul call question. That foul would have been the fourth on Moore. Now apparently there was some debris on the court. Well, the PA announcer just said if that happens again, there will be an automatic technical assessed against the home team. Landy Ellis, if Texas Tech is going to end their free throw drought, he better do it here because his team's down by four with 3.47 to go. Love the enthusiasm of this crowd right here. Creating lots of noise for Andy Ellis to overcome, but 6'11 seniors, you would expect lots of poise at the charity line. Seven for 17 at the line as a team, but he gets them both big ones. And there's a timeout with a two-point game now. Three minutes and 47 seconds to go. Texas Tech trails New Mexico State by two. It'll be the Aggies' ball. Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. People like Tom Baker. My credit card debt was outrageous. Then I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and got my payments almost cut in half. Now I have only one small monthly bill. Ameridad is a nonprofit organization that offers free consultations to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. People like the Shaws. Every month I pay our credit card bills, but the balances never seem to get smaller. Ameridad got our interest rates reduced, and now the balances are dropping dramatically. And what's even more amazing is our payments are less than before. Call 1-800-455-9988. Regardless of your credit, in minutes, join the thousands of people who have turned their financial lives around. People like Maria Rinaldi. Before I called Ameridet, the creditors were calling every day. I thought bankruptcy was the only way out. Now I'm debt-free, and my credit rating has been restored. Call 1-800-455-9988. 1-800-455-9988. Ameridet, helping America get out of debt. ACC basketball. A dominant new form. A superior game. An age-old rivalry is reignited as Georgia Tech battles North Carolina. Then the nation's top player, Jason Williams, leads number one Duke against conference foe Clemson. ACC Sunday Night Hoops premieres this week on Fox Sports Net. New Mexico State with a two-point lead. Jim, let me ask you a little bit about conditioning here because we talked about it earlier in the game. Texas Tech routinely doesn't go as deep as New Mexico State, and yet with the offense they play where everyone's always moving and you play a man-to-man -man almost exclusively where you've really got to work, you've got to be in shape. Well, and both ball clubs appear to be just that. The guy I'm keeping my closest eye on is Andy Ellis. He has never stepped off the court for one second tonight. He's played all 36 minutes and 16 seconds of this ball game, but this early in the season, I think these players can go hard the full 40 minutes. That may have been it on Powell. He has just fouled out. Well, not a smart foul that time. That far from the bucket, you don't want one of your best players fouling off the court with three minutes and 41 seconds to go. I like him. He's going to be a good one. He will create some havoc in the Big 12 Conference this year. Youngster from Butler County Junior College played well here tonight. And he finishes with 17 points, but with 3.41 to go, and his team down by two, and we talked about a somewhat short bench. That hurts. Well, this is what I like right here. Look at Bob Knight. Doesn't just say, nice game. He's talking to him about what he did good, what he did bad. Brooks has five points. Brooks has done a great job on the boards. You know, he, we didn't talk about that much. He averages four. He's had nine rebounds. And now the Carolina D trying to turn it up. And it rotated out of that zone, playing aggressive man-to-man. -man. 
Good choice right there by Matt Barley. Jeffrey's got to get some touches one on one. They got to get Jeffrey some touches. Fife, there's Jeffries with it. Williams guarding him, puts it on the floor. Into the paint, the loader is good. One on one, bringing it to Jeffries. He got the experience factor right there. I love this kid's ability. I just wish he could get a little bit nonsense about talking about the NBA, get a lot stronger physically, concentrate on having a great career at Indiana. Out of Bloomington, played high school with Sean May, who's coming to North Carolina. What a shock that was in recruiting. As Jeffries now a little one on one, he said, You what? You can't handle me. I'm too experienced. I played last year in the Big Ten. He gets in the three second area. Bloomington North High School played together. Told me that Sean May is going to be a real factor here at North Carolina. Fourth personal foul. Mr. Five. That was a real coup for Matt Doherty, who's a tenacious worker on the recruiting boards. Bring it in with Felton and McCants. See, making that entry. We talked about it last night. There's another example of a kid posted inside. He's available. He can't get the ball at the right time. We saw that with Evans last night up with Iowa. The great irony there is that the guys making the entry pass are so afraid of having it picked off and turning it over that they turn it over. Now we got to see a defensive effort by North Carolina. They need to stop. Spreading the floor, trying to get some spacing. Ooh. Hornsby missed it. Every matchup. Now Carolina can cut this thing down to single digits again. Indiana looks a little passive right now. It's a chance now for North Carolina to get back in this game big time. Williams, three, not even close. That's been a problem for the young guy shooting the ball this year. No seasons early. Any indication against the quality of Davidson and Hampton, and now Indiana on your home floor? That spells not a good sign for North Carolina faithful. They lost to Davidson. That's his former high school coach, Peter. Down here does a great job. Davidson came in, played really well. Bob McKillop, coach down at Holy Trinity High School in Long Island. It's a great thrill for those kids. Hampton and Davidson coming here to oh, play in this museum. I mean, it's like a basketball museum. I get goosebumps when I walk in this building. I look at all those jerseys up there, those superstars that have graced this building and played on this floor, played at Carmichael. Newton to Coverdale now, drives to the baseline, cut off. Orange feet from outside, three-pointer, no good. It looks like the foul is going to go against Newton. Sometimes you get such in a mood shooting threes, you get lulled in it, you have a little success that you get passive and you forget about doing all the other things that lead to winning. Almost like you think you can never miss. And that turnaround jumper by Moore. Valdez oh, with a Very cry. smart play right there by Valdez. That's what Coach Knight told me today. He's not one of our most talented players athletically, but he understands what I want better than anybody on my team right now. That's why he's in the game at crunch time, Greg. We got a minute 15 to go, and it's a four-point New Mexico State lead. Now there's another factor on this uh, Tech team that hurts when they're behind. They do not shoot a lot of three-pointers. They got a good percentage. They just don't take many. Don't forget Sunday, ACC basketball comes to Fox Sports Net, starting with a doubleheader. First, Georgia Tech goes to Chapel Hill to take on a North Carolina team, trying to get back on track. Then Clemson battles Jason Williams and the top-ranked Duke Blue Devils at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Coverage begins Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, and it's all right here on Fox Sports Net. Don't forget, viewers that are watching on Fox Sports Net in the Southwest region, it will be the Southwest Sports Report. Likewise, for those of you in other regions that are watching, at the normal time, you'll have your regional sports report. As Fox Sports Net tries to tailor everything to what the fans are most interested in. Lou Henson, he is most interested in picking up career victory 726. And he's got a four-point lead over Bob Knight, who, during their head-to-head, -head, had only beaten him 15 times and lost 27 all of those games. <laughs> you know, I Illinois. thought Lou was pretty smart. He said, don't be picking on me for having a lo losing record against Bob Knight. He said, you show me a coach that has a... 899, the new...
ultimate pepperoni lovers pizza. Only at us, Pizza Hut. Back here at the Dean Smith Center. North Carolina Tar Heels down 10 to the Indiana Hoosiers. Adam Boone with the ball. There's that man of end defense. Perry now with his quickness against Boone, an experienced player. Morrison drives. And wow. Newton got over there with the left hand and the big block. And I know, Dick, you're looking forward to this game. Bob Knight, Saturday at 5 Eastern on ESPN2. Red Raiders host TCU and Billy Tuck. Boy, talk about two of the more fun guys to sit down and listen to. We're going to have a nice little Sunday night conversation, Robert and I, and it's going to be about his transition at Texas Tech. We're certainly not going to rehash all the stuff that's happened through his career. It's been documented at Indiana. We're going to talk about Texas Tech. He's like a little kid now. He's talking to his voice. He's so enthused and so excited about the new challenge. He's got a challenge tonight against Lou Du, Lou Henson of New Mexico State. By the way, can I can I say this? I don't want to see him throw the chair anymore, right? <laughs> I've seen that highlight 9,000 times in the last 10 years. Let's put it away and not roll it anymore. I agree with you. I agree with you. Let's check in with Bill Pita. All right, John, you guys are talking about the game. Here it is. New Mexico State here with the basketball. Kelsey Crooks drives and hits the, oh, actually gets the rebound off the glass. And New Mexico State, inside of a minute, leads it by four. All right, Billy, thanks a lot. Here we've got a 10-point lead for Indiana. Jeffries looks to drive, spins, turns, left hand, rolls it down. That's a big-time move right there. Again, that's reminiscent of watching Danny Manning play in 88. He was very similar. That guard, he wanted a walking violation. I tell you, he works that sideline. He works so hard. With so much spirit in that Notre Dame program. The one year he was there, they went to the NIT. Johnson's three-pointer is good. They found a player. They found a kid that's going to give him some minutes. That's the one thing that's happened here tonight. Will Johnson is earning some minutes. And I'll tell you one thing I'm impressed with Mike Davis. If you don't play hard, John, he's not going to keep you in that lineup. He's going to take you out. And that's something I believe, whether he admits it or not, he learned from the general. That's one thing that's made up the general in his career. You don't play hard, you're not smart. I don't care what you did yesterday. First kicker. Emmett hands it off of the basket on the reverse layup. Mikey Marshall, we are tied at 72. How about that movement without the ball? Andre Emmett <laughs> through the crowd. Mikey Marshall cutting down to the baseline. Nice reverse layup. You know, that is also a Bob Knight trademark. A lot of fans at home were probably saying, we got a tie, we got to call a timeout. No, he believes if his players are coached well enough, they know what they're supposed to do. And, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't agree more, Greg. Don't give the defense yeah. time to set up. Get it down the floor. He's coached them all week for this situation. A little bit surprised by this move by Eric Channing. He's, he's known as a perimeter shooter. He challenges Andy Ellis, who has several blocks on the night already. Terrific job by the 6'11 senior, enabling the Raiders to come back and tie the ball game up with 13 seconds left. Valdez kicks it out. Andre Emmett. Makes the nice feed to Mikey Marshall. That's sophomore to sophomore right there for Texas Tech, making the play to tie the ball game up. Well, it's game. Oh, there's a couple of guys who might be able to help. Oh. Peppers and Curry. I don't think you can see Peppers. He's a candidate. Got a great chance to win the Lombardi Award. That's also a great chance to win the, I guess, the Gursky Award as well. Right. He's a uh, defensive player of the year. Potentially say he is awesome. Could be the first pick of the draft. Said he wasn't going to play basketball this year, but the word is that he might be rethinking it. Ronald Curry, on the other hand, is likely to join the team. Emmanuel jump shot well off the mark. Boy with the rebound. Isn't it sad in the way that your program in North Carolina has gotten to the point that you're hoping to pray that some football players can bail you out? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Scott. Scott wants to drive along the baseline. He's got a basket to guard himself and wound up taking himself out of the play. Two on two, patience, patience. I had the trail man, had Jeffries. I would trust, trust Jeffries with the ball. He's a little leader. I like his leadership because he's not a great communicator. That's one Ross Orr from college. ACC Big Ten Challenge, Mr. Saunders. It's been a pleasure to be with you, buddy. It's been fun covering The heave down court. All the way out of court. Well, now, uh, New Mexico 
Mexico State gets the ball under their own under basket their with 1.7 seconds left. Now remember, early in the game, New Mexico State scored from under their own basket when they got the little lob to Channing in the free throw lane. Let's see what they go to right here. A great opportunity. I got to run. That's what they looked for. It wasn't there. It's in time. It's no good. Overtime. The shot was off in time by Trammell, who had been the story of the... Time chance to get in the game and become an animated character in the Scorpion King video game. Get it all on pay-per-view with The Mummy Returns on Blockbuster Ticket only on DirecTV. Ten heavy hitters. Two titles at stake. This one is out of control. This month, it's Championship Chaos, the biggest pride fighting event ever. The middleweight rematch. The heavyweight crown. Anarchy reigns with two belts up for grabs. Order the martial arts event of the year, Pride Fighting's Championship Chaos. Playing this month on direct ticket pay-per-view on direct TV. Don't miss this. ESPN brings you great NFL action on Thursday night. Donovan McNabb's Eagles have their claws on the NFC East. But first must get past Casey's Trent Green and Tony Gonzalez. Eagles Chiefs, 8.30 Thursday on ESPN. just too hot for TV. It's you gotta see this too hot for Fox. Call 800-550-7922 to order all the explicit over the top out of Later on Sports Center, MJ goes head to head with the answer in an NBA fat marquee matchup. Why'd they turn out the lights in a marquee matchup in college hoops? Peyton Manning fires back at his coach. Join me, Stuart Scott, and Dan Patrick for Sports Center after the game. Filipino back in the studio, Texas Tech, New Mexico State. Tech is down by two. Inside of 20 seconds to go, Mike Marshall up and good, ties it. And the game is now in overtime. Look at here. Well, uh, tough just like the deal, days of the Big Ten, eh? No, tough it's going to be the deal. <laughs> That's uh, right. You better hope he comes uh, back and wins that game. <laughs> But has problems down there this weekend. Scott now with a nice move. Spins out of trouble. Into Lang. A hook is good. Lang now with 25 points. And that surpasses his career high now by three. 22 was the previous. Can't allow him to get the ball in that deep, John. Once he gets in that three second area, it's late. He's allowed to shape up. And that's the area of North Carolina's got to take advantage of. Scoring more to the inside. Going inside, outside. Lang has really responded to that. Now he's got to get his buddy Cable to respond. Move the spins, trap. The turnover and the heels now with another chance to get it to single digits. And it's 77-74 Aggies. A scoop to the hoop for the junior. Ellis. Oh, I just can't say enough about Andy Ellis. I've said that about five times, but he just keeps getting more impressive as the ball game goes along. So strong. Now remember, he has not been off the court tonight. He's been playing 42 minutes. Balances up so well now on that shot off the dribble. Mason rolls it out, and a rebound pulled down by Batman Valdez, who's been their version of the overtime key. Ellis, Emmett, fall away one-hander, back lifts it, and the rebound off to New Mexico State. Yeah, nice job by James Moore going up between two red the way you look at printers forever. Flexmark, fashion for printing ideas.
in two days. Get ready. Archangel is down, and I am on the run. To cross the line. The American people want their pilot back. Behind enemy lines. Rated PG-13 in two days only in theaters. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge is presented by 989 Sports. Only on PlayStation and PlayStation 2. And in part by Lexmark. Passion for printing ideas. And by Gap. Back here at the Dean Smith Center, Indiana, the Hoosiers with an 11 point lead over North Carolina. The ACC Big Ten Challenge looking at game summary. Three point shooting, oh, what a seven. change in the second half. Yeah, second half, they struggled. We talked about how they started to go to that three point shot. You get low, you get the push, you have some success. They had that tough loss to Marquette, who had a great tournament. Tom Green did a fantastic job to be. Tennessee, Indiana, and Gonzaga. What a freshman they got. Wayne Wade. Nobody that talks about him. That kid is unbelievable. Cable misses the shot, and then Lang goes over the back. We talked about maybe getting some help from the football team. Wow. Nice pass to Peppers. Oh. Curry, the quarterback. Peppers, the defender of the year for many people. One of the most explosive players there is on a college football field. And mentioned earlier he could be the number one pick in the NFL draft so maybe that's, not gonna play as well Curry right behind yep. him I think that both guys bring a certain strut they bring a certain strut that you have to have that you don't see right now with the North Carolina kids but that comes to we had that discussion with Matt today in his lot in his office about confidence you have that when you have confidence and when you're gonna be the first guy in the NFL draft you have that kind of confidence it's no big deal for him when you toss him aside 300 pounds Offensive line has no big deal to get in the post. Uh oh, here. look what I'm looking at. Look what we're looking at. He oh, told us he would never play right. a zone. Two, three zone, Indiana. When did I get Mike Davis? <laughs> he fipped us, man. He told us we'll never see a zone. And they are in a two, three zone. Smart move. Good move. Make him shoot the perimeter. Take some time off the clock as well and attacking the zone. Scott drives the baseline. Just too many bodies over there to challenge the shot. He tried that three or four times and it's just not available. Indiana's going to make some changes as Leach and Jeffers come back in. They're going to see Scott nowhere to go. Now he's up in the year. And there's Leach rotating over, who's a shot blocker. Look at Mike Davis. Look at the react. What a theatrical on the sideline. I like that. Shot clock is down to three. Cable beats the buzzer. Brings out the Jeffers with the rebound. He's versatile. Mr. Versatility, one of the versatile players in the country. Multi-dimensional right there, Jared Jeffers. He has a tendency to go a little passive at times. He's got to get a little more aggressive. Coverdale was looking for that pass. He's lucky he got tipped. Well, can't really put the squeeze on him in that game. They need to get the step up. Got a chance to win that great Alaska shootout. Marquette responded to the challenge. Manuel just riding Coverdale all the way to the goal. Don't forget the NFL. Tomorrow night, Donovan McNabb and the Eagles against former Philadelphia coach Dick Vermeil and the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs trying to get the offense going. Thursday night, NFL special, 8.30 Eastern. Don't forget, best new show everyone's talking about. For one way, or, one way or the other, the best damn sports show, period. It's the new nightly sports show that features a comedian who's a diehard sports fan and a bunch of ex-jocks who really know the game. Critics are calling it a collision of sports and comedy. Just what you've been waiting for. That's the best damn sports show, period, tonight at 11.30 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Texas Tech at the foul line is 14 for 24. And... Uh, New Mexico State's 13 for 16. The Tech's come a long way at the free throw stripe because they were four for 11 at one point in this ball game. Damn it. We're not crooks. He's open. Got it. Damn it. Now, nice execution. Good discipline right there. Get the ball in the hands of the man that can make it happen. Andre Emmett, their leading scorer. So tough. There in the eight-foot range. Trying to cut through the screen. 
knocked out of bounds last catch by A.J. Moy. 0-3 is a possibility here. As a matter of fact, six minutes away from that. The last time they started that was 28-29. 17-8, and eight, though, they finished that year, so. Well, the year they were lost their first two games, Michael Jordan in the 82-83 uh, season, they finished 28-8 and eight and went to the Elite Eight. But that club had just a purpose, a uh, turnover. Really struggling right here, attacking that zone. And our guy, Brad Doherty, was a freshman on that club. 18 turnovers as you look at what's coming up next on the schedule. So already 18 turnovers, which is what they averaged in the first two games of the year. So they're going to top that. Barry takes it right at him and right to the hole. Just too easy. Yeah, very easy. Nobody stepped in. Nobody closed off the driving angle. I believe Brad was a freshman of the year, 83-84, when he lost to Indiana in Atlanta in a regional game in the NCAA tournament. That's when Diane Dockage got all the publicity in the world. That guard, he was there. That was Dan Dockage supposedly was the guy that stopped Michael Jordan. But Michael got a couple fouls early and sat on the bench. Manual drive, it's right at Leach. Well, these two storied programs, here's a look back at the 81 National Championship, Dean Smith. There's a look at Matt Doherty knocking down that shot, but it would not be enough to stop Bob Knight and Isaiah Thomas, who throws the ball high. And Isaiah, won it. Isaiah and Ray Tolbert, what a combination. So look at Jim Thomas, was a member of that team as well. Had two points in that game. He's got himself a championship ring. I love to look at Matt Doherty, pound for pound, inch for inch. Was there any better on a collegiate level than Isaiah Thomas? You talk about a winner. If you look here at second place, they got so many banners running up here. It's incredible. You can't keep up with all of them. That year, 83 84, was Michael's junior year. Mr. Jordan, they were, a lot of people thought would have won the national title, but that was the year Georgetown won it all. That's right. Boys, Patrick Ewing won their final four, three out of four years. Guard has been a lot of man, a lot of winning as a player, and it's certainly a uh, staff at Kansas here. Roy Williams has just posted one 25 game boot season after another every year, and this year will be no different. Lang got pushed in the back going after that rebound. See, Jeffers now get another rebound. They got to get the rebound a little bit more, a little more consistent on the glass. He certainly could be one of America's premier players. He's a PT peer, no question about it. Coverdale looks to drive, sees it over, fakes the pass, and it's a good idea, they just didn't finish it off. Perry rattles out. Out of bounds. He is, you make sure that Tech never, or that New Mexico State never has the ball again. Now Bob Knight says go, here's Chavis. Four on the clock, Chavis throws it in traffic, rolls it off, but there's a whistle and a foul! And Chavis will be at the free throw line with exactly three seconds to play. Uh, made the nice move on the baseline. New Mexico State rotated well. Tough break for the Aggies. The third foul on Trammell. Chavis has hit his last four free throws. Coach Knight was hollering for Chavis to make things start happening. Moore came over to help. Good rotation, just a half step late. Two shots for Chavis, is it four in a row? Five out of six, but he misses the first. This is the best free throw shooter on the team. This is definitely the one player that Texas Tech wanted on the line. But you know what, Greg? He's never been in this situation in his life. <laughs> no. Never played before close to 13,000 fans. Well, at New Mexico State calls the timeout, and of course, understand that and really understand that next year again they'll start bringing in the kind of players that they are accustomed to wearing that North Carolina uniform. It's as simple as can be. So, I mean, these so. coaches have worked their hearts out. They got some good minds on that bench. When you look at Doug Wojcik and Portamount and Kaysan and McKinnon. McKinnon, by the way, his dad is here. Bob McKinnon, you know the name, coached in the NBA, a great guy. Here with his mom as you look at that staff. They're working hour after hour, studying tapes. And that's that old saying, John, you can only do so much, baby. You have to have personnel. For New Mexico State, because the worst they have is a second overtime. 
80 to 80 with three seconds to play. Fifteen points for Chavis, who averages 8.4, but the 16th could be huge. And Texas Tech has a one-point lead, three seconds to go. Pass at midcourt, Channing cuts around the defense. He's got a shot. It's no good. It's over. A terrific execution by New Mexico State at the very end. Channing got the look. He got a shot. That's all you could hope for. And the final score goes to Texas Tech as the Red Raiders win their fifth out of six, 81 to 80 over the New Mexico State Aggies. That's the final score from Las Cruces. For those of you in the Southwest region, stand by your Southwest of his game to where Lang has taken his tonight. It's as simple as can be. Those two guys are the veterans and the experienced players who have to be the leaders of produce. Still calling for the foul. Cool. Copy, scan, and print with photo quality. Introducing the all-in-one Lexmark X83 for only $199. Lexmark, passion for printing ideas. For everything she means to you, and everything she ever will, the three stone necklace for your past, present, and future. Diamond is forever. Going to 412 rounds is all about stamina. That's why I like high endurance from Old Spice. No deodorant protects better. And it lasts longer because it evaporates more slowly. Want proof? If you're not convinced, Old Spice will buy you a stick of your old stuff. Let me put it this way. High endurance lasts longer than I do. But I'm working on that. so early uh shopping you hate shopping not when it's for you i'm a six come on baby you're a ten any way you can get to mcdonald's for the new ranchero bagel sandwich with a distinctive southwest kick it's a spicy morning wake-up call made just for you on mcdonald's new taste menu any luck shopping oh yeah unexpected new tastes at your favorite place now on mcdonald's new taste menu mcdonald's a worldwide olympic partner just this. Introducing the all-in-one Lexmark X83. For only $199, it copies, scans, and prints with photo quality. And will change the way you look at printers forever. Lexmark, passion for printing ideas. Indiana's lead is 13 with 340 left. North Carolina Tar Heels looking at going 0-3 for the first time since 1928. 29. I can't wait to grab our buddy Brad Doherty, who loves Carolina, played here. As I said, he was a freshman in 1982, 83 season. I gotta grab him and say, hey, what's happening to your heels, man? I gotta tease him a little bit. There'll be a lot of teasing going on around the country. That's just the nature of it. That's good for that many years. That's only in fun, obviously. And they will be back, trust me. Matt Doherty says he knew this was a possibility even when they were rolling the middle of next or last season. I knew last year we won 18 games and people were patting me on the back that this is fragile. You lose some games and all of a sudden those same people patting me on the back could be stabbing me in the back. And and I understood that coming into this position. No one told me how to take the job at Notre Dame. No one told me how to take the job here. But the people have been, been you know, good to me. They've been fair. Uh, I think the media, local media has been fair. Uh, you know, as long as we work hard, uh, I think that the fans, the core fans, understand that this, you know, uh, you know, is atypical so far, and that uh, we have some young guys, and that as long as they see progress, I think that they can deal with that. If they don't see progress, you know, then they'll get frustrated. But for the most part, I think uh, people have been good. 
There's no question that it's a typical of this program. And I will simply tell you this. To all of those that are having a little fun right now because they see North Carolina struggling, it's like the Yankees in baseball and Notre Dame in football. There are those that love them and those that hate them. But the bottom line is North Carolina will be back. There's no doubt, John. I'll tell you why. Number one, it's a great university. Number two, they have so much to offer young people. Number three, they got such a great basketball facility and tradition. They have great fan support and with all of that going that leads to recruiting success and he will get the necessary players to get them back be careful who's making fun now to come right back at you Bill Peter. all right john ot texas tech new mexico state tied up will chavis the second of two got it so tech is up one last chance for new mexico state you see the time left in overtime eric channing gets open can he win the game he can Texas Tech hangs on an OT, 81-80. Ah. Oh, I know I'm getting a free dinner when I go there Friday night. The General's jumping with joy right now. That's a big win on a road. Especially against his arch rival from the Big Ten, Lou Henson. He's 5-1, and one, should have been 6-0. Oh. He got beat by Sam Houston State. Blew out Texas El Paso Monday night. Ah. Capel trying to fight his way in. Where was that passion earlier in the game? Well, see, inside, that's where he's got to go a little bit more. He's got to join his buddy a little high-low. Ian Lang inside. He's got talent. He's got ability. He's got to make it happen. Coverdale open for three. Not this time, but Moy gets it. And there's no reason that A.J. Moy should come out of that group with that rebound. Exactly. Rebanded for a guard. He had six rebands against Texas as well. But you're right, John. That would be big people. See, I think Jason has a tendency to want to stay on the perimeter too much. I think he's got to give a more inside play. He has post up ability. Don't forget, Sports Center's coming up next. Dan Patrick and Stuart Scott. Jordan against Iverson, of course. Michael Jordan to see if the losing streak continues. The question of the night Who would you like to see Michael <laughs> Jordan go one on one with? Wow. Well, I'd like to see him go one on one with. I like, see him to, I like to see him go one-on-one -on -one with Dan Patrick. I don't want to see Dan shoot that jumper now. I know he shot it down at Dayton in terms of in his dreams, shooting that three-point <laughs> shot. I heard him challenge Lisa Leslie one time in a shooting contest. Oh, my mind would be on Lisa for that. No question. I know it was one-on-one, -on -one, it'd be blowout city. What? Stuart Scott, he must be all nervous tonight. His heel's going down again. He's going to be depressed. Dan, you better wake him up. Stuart's going to be so depressed. Need a few hankies on the set of sports set. Carolina, though, trying to fight it back. Still got over two minutes to go. Oh, great try by Morrison. And Newt was over there. Come up with the block. They get some play out of Newt. And certainly Peach gets better and better and gets some confidence inside. They'll have a nice, solid balance with their perimeter and their inside attack. And with all these games on the road, I think Indiana, Mike's done a good job with this club, preparing them and getting ready to play on the road because it is not easy in college basketball to go away from home and to think that they only have two home games prior to the start of the season. I mean, he ought to call up Jim Beheim and find out the Jim <laughs> Beheim best of the schedule. I remember one year, Jimmy Beheim didn't play a home, a road game until January, I swear. You look it up two years ago, he didn't play a road game until January. He had a better home schedule than the San Quentin prison team. <laughs> I mean, come on now. John, you know what really gets me going? I was talking to somebody today about graduation rates. And, you know, North Carolina certainly has a good graduation rate with their players, but really drives me bananas. A kid like Michael Chappelle could go to Duke for two years, transfer to Michigan State, graduate from Michigan State, and Duke gets penalized as it's 0 for 1 when Elton Brand goes to the pros, or, for example, Joseph Forte. Now, North Carolina gets penalized because Joseph Forte goes to the pros. I think that's ludicrous and absurd the way they chart and evaluate and come up with graduation rates. What's going to be done about that? Carter and Jameson and Stackhouse and Wallace all counts against North Carolina's How graduation rates. They're all billionaires. How absurd is that? The fact that a kid leaves, he leaves on good academic standing. who should not count against a school. I like to know what they're going to do in the case of speaking about Notre Dame. We took up Matt Darty, who certainly had a solid year his first year there. Danny Miller played three years at Maryland and now transferred to Notre Dame. Graduates from Notre Dame. Are they going to get credited for him graduating? Notre Dame. Maryland? Notre Dame. That's absurd. Look at those jerseys, man. 
That is stardom. That is consistency. When you talk about great programs and what I love about both these programs and what Dean Smith and Bob Knight brought to, that, to their programs, great integrity and doing it the right way. Never do you hear these programs involved in NCAA investigations and problems of cheating and all that you hear in college athletics, and that's why I salute them. But I look at all the years of North Carolina success, never once have they been questioned about what they have done. Taper takes it down. Oh, nice job. Good power move underneath. See, that's where he's got to go, John. He's got to get more inside score scores. He's got to really want the ball inside more. That's a concentration of area I think North Carolina's got to work on getting Cable and Lang inside. Getting him down into the low boxes on the interior. I'm going to see him rolling into the inside. There he is, the wide open lane. Steps to the gap, a little head fake, lays it on the glass. His dad coached an old Dominion, tough situation. Did a good job. They got a nice, good young coach there with Lane Taylor. Came out of Stanford. I love Stanford's team with Casey Jacobson and Josh Childress. Remember that name, Diaper Dandy. He and Dwayne Wade, another Diaper Dandy from Marquette. Don't get a lot of publicity. They can play. Uh, Scott looked like he had all ball tapping that from behind. Foul is called. AJ Moy is our 989 sports player of the game. 16 points. It's a career high, including four of seven. Actually, all four of those were in the first half. Four of five in the first half. Well, that they, they, they were really important then because North Carolina came out with a lot of fire. They came out really ready to play. And boy, really hurt them by making those three shooting over the top of that zone. He's got a smile on his face. He knows he's a star. See, he says, I'm a star. I'm like Patrick. I'm like Scott. I'd become a star. Look at me. I'm on a tube. I want to be like John Saunders, a big star, do hockey, basketball. Wow. How does it feel to be a star, John? It must be great. Uh, I'm so home. Everybody says, that's John Saunders. I'll, I'll call up Prince Berman and ask him. <laughs> that's, that's the one we've got. Is he a star? Absolutely. Really? Oh, a huge collision there. up going over to the North Carolina Tar Heels final minute 27 here I can't wait for that minute 27 o'clock to wind down and he's got this baby in a book this one is a W for the Indiana Hoosiers Scott trying to create something it's not there Jeffers grabs the rebound you look at the Big Ten now it looks like the only eyes Illinois Iowa and Indiana I think Iowa's gonna certainly be in that mix there's no doubt to me they're gonna get better and better with those young guards Michigan State is going to be in the middle there. It'll be a, a dangerous team, very young, but I think it's going to be Illinois, Iowa. Oh, I believe you're up. here, but ACC is total dominance in the Big Ten. Yeah, you know, I think when you look at the Big Ten right now, they're really having a little struggle early this year. We talked about it earlier with some of the losses that they've had early this year. When you think about Yale beating the Penn State, you think about Wisconsin losing to Weber State, you think about, for example, Purdue losing to Butler, Michigan to Western Michigan to Bowling Green, Indiana to Marquette, Northwestern to East and Carolina. I mean, Michigan State struggling up in the NIT. But it looks like right now there's a wide open situation as you see a drive right there by Moy in the conference. I think Illinois and Iowa and Indiana will be fighting for the first spot. That's my gut feeling. Illinois will bounce back. You know, not easy going out of Maryland with a one in a row. Not I was going to say, you know, anybody who looks at that game and says, geez, Illinois must not have played very well. Not exactly the easiest thing in the world to go down to the whole field house and play against that team in that environment. They got a great performance out of Wilcox. He was a man inside, giving him another plus player. Not trying to show some patience here. He understands he has to be patient. Hey, One of the things that, that he said to us that I think was most telling, and actually very forthright on his part, was saying that he had an idea that they could start this play. You know, 
he wasn't sure with the team being as, as young as it is. Well, where I would disagree is I can't buy losing Hampton and Davidson. And I can handle losing Indiana here, but there's no reason whatsoever these kids should be losing to Hampton. And I'm not taking anything away from Hampton and yeah. Davidson. But I ask one simple question. How many kids wearing a uniform for Hampton and wearing a uniform for Davidson were offered scholarships at this level? And the answer would be simply no. And, and that's what I feel. And those are two games I think it's pretty tough to make excuses losing those two games on your home floor. Carolina just trying to foul. The ball is popping right in the hands of Morrison. Great to see the honor Woody Gorham at halftime. For the people that don't know, he's the legendary voice here of North Carolina basketball. He is Don Fisher, who does a great job for Indiana. I love those guys that are so loyal to their schools. They make my old Haywood Ledford teams. I mean, guys that are really great broadcasters at their local schools and put their hearts and soul in it. Woody has done that for years, and so has Don Fisher. Well, the guys that get to follow these teams for a number of years and see all the players come and go, Coaches that, that come and go at some institutions and that are there for 30 plus years, like Dean Smith. They've been good to me, I'll tell you that. They give me all my little tidbits, as does the media when I walk in there and I see the Frankie DeCenzo's little world and Barry Jacobs and company. Those guys know all the insides. I'll tell you one thing they know their basketball down here, John. You talk to the writers down here, they know their basketball. Lennox Rawlings and company. I mean, these guys are really good people. Coverdale and Morrison does get the foul. It's Carolina not about to give up with 27 seconds remaining. Down by 11. Came out, gave a great effort. I'll tell you, the effort they gave in the first 10 minutes played with so much emotion. And that, to me, is the danger part when you look at the situation because they played so hard, yet they're still unable to win on their own floor. But they lost a quality, good basketball team here tonight. Not a great team, but a good team team that will get better and better because they have some youth as well when you look here at Indiana. Well, and if they can find their, their shooting touch as they did in the first half, they're going to surprise a few people as well. Well, I know one thing. When they play at home at Assembly, I mean, down here, those fans react to them in such a positive way. They'll be tough to beat on their home floor. Coverdale with a nice night, 17 points. Yeah, he really played well. It was that starting role. Got a little message from Mr. Davis. One thing, you, you better come to play. That's Mr. Campbell again on the perimeter. Nice rebound right there. That's a big time rebound. Yeah. Gets it back up. See, Jack and Daniel and certainly Scott and the kid I really surprised I thought was going to be an instant factor. I mean, a diaper dandy right out of the game was Jawad Williams. But you got to give a kid time. I mean, he's only his third game in college basketball. Yeah, let me ask you about that, too, because you, obviously you've coached. It's difficult. You come in, you're a star in high school, you're coming to play for Carolina. It's been a dream. You're coming to play for one of the top institutions. Now, all of a sudden, 0-3 for the first time since 28-29. All these people are pointing fingers at you in the uniform. And as a kid, that's got to be tough to take. Yeah, psychologically, it can be very tough. I felt so bad for the kid who did I read the critical comments about his play at the point guard slot. I think people have to understand you can only do what you do. And if you don't have that blinding speed and quickness, you can't just make that overnight. I think Curry would be a great help at the point guard slot for this team. I don't think they'll see Peppers. I don't think he'll jeopardize the chance, John. He's going to be a number one pick in the NFL draft, the potential of an injury. But I think there's a good chance that Curry will play, and he'll give them some experience at that point guard slot. They're hoping, obviously, for a bold burn. John Bunning spoke to the crowd here at halftime, and they went wild talking about how important it is that game coming up to get a bowl goal. What a turnaround. He look, look, Curry, he's got a phone. He must be calling people up asking if we're talking about him. I mean, they got cell phones in the crowd. I mean, look at my guy right here. He's got a cell phone. Hey, I wonder right now, who's he charging for that phone call? He's calling Stuart Scott. Yeah, look at him right now. I said, hey, Stuart, give me some time, baby. <laughs> Unbelievable. Things have changed. Cell phones. It used to be the sporting news in the locker room. Now it's the Wall Street Journal. We're all crying about that. Enron, did you buy the stock? No. I to buy it. <laughs> you tried to bankrupt it. Oh, wow. All I can say is, wow. Oh, we have no stock report here. Stock report is in basketball. Right now, stock report in Indiana, way, way up. Way up. Stock in North Carolina. Down, but for how long? Remains to be seen. Only for a short period of time. I'll invest in that stock because it'll get better and better in the future. So North Carolina, the Tar Heels start 0-3 for the first time since 1928.
29-69-66. Your final score, the ACC with a 5-2 lead in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. For Dick Vitale, I'm John Saunders. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. SportsCenter's up next.